It's no secret that our favorite stock is SoFi, but to be honest, there is a lot of fintechs eating up the traditional banks out there, and one in a thousand names that you probably know is Upstart, who's been ahead of the game since it went public last year. Upstart is sitting pretty around $151 per share, compared to the one-stop shop fintech unicorn SoFi at around $14 per share today. How far is SoFi from getting to the same level as Upstart? Welcome to Wealth Gambit. On this channel, we cover the latest stock trends and news. Whether it's a deep dive into the fundamentals of a stock or breaking news, we cover it all here on this channel. If you guys like that type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe to get notified as soon as we drop new videos. In this video, we'll compare Upstart to SoFi. Are they in the same league or is one ahead of the other? Let's find out. Let's find out. As we can see in most of our portfolios, the market has been an absolute bloodbath. Perhaps we should take a look at the bigger picture because even the S&P 500 and Dow Jones are also plummeting these days. But anyways, let the battle begin. Get ready for the next battle. battle, battle, battle. Starting off with SoFi's arch nemesis, Upstart. Upstart holdings are also in the realm of the fintech industry, leveraging technology to one-up the traditional banks. The company primarily offers credit services and they do it by working on the consumer demand for loans and linking it to the network of artificial intelligence enabled bank partners. So how does Upstart make money? They earn from the lending service they provide through the referral fees paid by those banks to Upstart. And they also charge what we call platform fees for every loan they originate as well as servicing fees when customers repay the said loans. In simple terms, Upstart works primarily on screening out loan borrowers, originating unsecured personal and auto loans with the use of AI to clear up the way for faster loan decisions. A few months ago, the company teamed up with a workflow API provider called NXT Soft, and this allows it to streamline the implementation of its platform to the financial institutions in the US. Just last year, 21% of loans funded by Upstart were retained by the originating banks and institutional investors bought 77% of them. Wow, that's a lot. Founded by people who used to work at Google, Upstart was founded in 2012, a year after SoFi was established. The people behind this are Paul Gu and a councilman who also worked as the manager of Google in online sales and operations, and Dave Girard, who used to be Google's president for eight years. That's pretty impressive. You don't just become the president of the world's largest search engine by chance. You need to work your way and fight through the trenches to accomplish that. Much respect to Dave Girard. Yeah, sure. So. Uh company was founded uh, about nine years ago. I, I'd been at Google for eight years building uh, what became called Google Cloud now. And uh, uh, sorry, my wife's texting me. I got to tell her this isn't the time. It's the world that we live in these days. Um, uh, and, you know, Upstart, we started with a, a different sort of product. I mean, it was inspired by the same notion, improving access to credit, access to capital for those who, you know, were sort of underserved. Um, but we started out with this product called what became called an income share agreement, which was sort of a, a derivative of a loan. And uh, we were really creating this thing, you know, kind of from scratch in terms of people being able to raise money and sell off shares of their future income, which sounds a little crazy. It was a little crazy, um, got a lot of attention, got a lot of press, uh, but in the end, it didn't really scale as a business. So about a year into it, we kind of had that meeting where you say, you know, hey, six months of cash left here. We better figure out something different to do and you know more, more to the story but we essentially pivoted into uh, what essentially became a consumer lending platform and with the basic thesis that you could use fancier math more data to actually more accurately price loans and we didn't know much more than that we didn't even know whether we could create enough differentiation and then you know my co-founder paul when we started he was 20. Uh, i was 45. i was older than his parents which is a little bit odd but um you know, Paul went to like one of the online lenders at the time. Now, now Paul just, you know, valedictorian of his high school class, perfect SAT score, uh, double major at Yale, though he left to, um, uh, he left to do this Peter Thiel 20 under 20 thing and, and right. never graduated, but clearly, you know, making six figure salary as a 20 year old working with me and uh, goes to one of these online lending platforms. From one of them, he gets rejected outright. The other one offers them like a 27% APR. So like, hmm, you know, I bet you we could do better than that for Paul knowing what we know about him. So, you know, kind of inspired to say uh, most people are either left out in the cold or paying too much for credit. And if you had a smarter, better model, uh, a lot of good things could happen but on both sides, both for the consumer and for the lender. 
yeah, I heard Paul give an interview once, or maybe it was just a quote that I saw written down, but he said something like, if the person never defaults, then they paid too much. And if they did default, then they paid too little. Upstart went public last December, 2020, starting at $20 per share. And about 9 million shares were sold when it first traded. And since then, the company's looking for more space to grow in the industry. Upstart shares nearly doubled when it agreed to buy Prodigy Software, a provider of cloud-based automotive retail software. Just this last earnings call, Upstart's revenues are now up by 250% year over year, gathering up to $228 million. The contribution profit is also up by 184%, totaling almost $96 million for this quarter. On top of that, the company also realized a net income of $29 million and it's also skyrocketing by a whopping 201% compared to last year. Money, money, money. Upstart seems to be crushing it this past quarter. According to their website, about 16.7 billion loans have been originated and 67% of them are fully automated. It's safe to say that they're clearly here to stay since technology is disrupting everything, especially in the financial service industry. Technology. Technology. Oh on the other side, let's now talk about SoFi. We've all heard of the phrase one-stop shop. And if you haven't, they operate in three segments, financial services, lending. And just last year, it acquired Galileo to expand into offering technology as a segment in their operations. Just this last quarter, SoFi still loves up to the title of having the fastest growth in consumer finance as year-over-year -year member growth is up by 96%. Just as members grow, so do the products they offer. This leads us to think that members are loving the products they offer and more people are now willing to adopt more products. I love it, I love it. With the one-stop shop business model, cross-selling has made SoFi stand out in the industry today. There's been a lot of analysts putting spec on SoFi's name. Y'all stand me? When y'all saying my name, put some respect on it. Did you? This past quarter, SoFi Money, SoFi Invest, and SoFi Credit Card are the ones that brought in 79% of the new member growth, and another 73% came from the cross-selling strategy of the company. Total gap net revenue rose to $272 million, while it's eyeing improvement in their operations net loss from $42.9 million down to just 30 this quarter. While the price of Upstar is higher than SoFi's, the value that SoFi gives to their consumers and the opportunities to cross-sell still make them stand out among every other fintech out there. Upstart has its eye on leveraging its artificial intelligence and improving its technology sector and offering financial services. SoFi is also leveraging artificial intelligence with Galileo to detect fraud. But on the other hand, SoFi could potentially catch up to Upstart especially with the bank charter expected to arrive soon. This leads to less expenses and basically more money to earn. I am a magnet to money. I now have more than I need. Even though Upstart is soaring at around $150 per share with SoFi around $14 at the time of recording this, their market cap only has a difference of less than a billion dollars, with Upstart being $12.38 billion and SoFi being $11.6 billion at the time of recording this. Money's good. Money is happiness. And that's SoFi with no bank charter. What more when the big day comes? If you got any value from this video, all we ask is that you like and subscribe because it takes a considerable amount of time to make these videos and it would help the channel out a lot. Also, feel free to follow us on our social media at Wealth Gambit to get updated on any stock market news and financial memes. Until next time, peace.